God has gifted us a rich and abundant world. We're closest to God and we're closest to one another when we're sharing that abundance amongst all of us. This is the Jubilee promise. It is the promise that God has given us to live in a world where we all have enough. This promise was so important to the early believers that they created law books to ensure that they would be living in harmony with their God and in harmony with one another. The Torah, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers, actually lays out a law for how people should live in right relationship with God and sharing that abundance with one another. Every seven years, slaves should be set free. Every seven years, debts should be forgiven. Every seven times seven years, the great jubilee, the great restoration, where we're all protected from having too much or too little. When we read the Gospel of Luke, we see uh, in that reading that Jesus closes the scripture and says, and you're hearing today the prophecy is fulfilled. And we know from the scripture, the crowd is baffled. Isn't this the day laborer from Nazareth? And he's telling us today in our hearing that inequality is over, that we will all be able to have enough. This Jubilee promise is critically important to my organization, Jubilee USA Network. We're a coalition of Jews, Muslims, and Christians who work to establish a world where we all have enough. We know that the teachings of the Jubilee promise are critical and important themes in the Hebrew and Christian scriptures, as well as an important theme in Muslim teaching. Our organization is considered by Congressional Quarterly to be the last standing bipartisan organization in Washington, D.C. And we fulfill this Jubilee promise by working on global policies that impact poverty, inequality, and policies that will protect our planet. Over our 25-year history, we have won $130 billion in debt relief. We've won another $40 billion in disaster relief. And these monies that we've won have impacted U.S. territories like Puerto Rico. They've impacted countries like Zambia, El Salvador, and the three Ebola-affected countries in West Africa. The debt relief monies that we've won are some of the most accountable revenue aid streams in the entire history of global policy. By law, when we win debt relief for a country, this money must be used to build hospitals and schools. In Africa, 54 million kids have gone to school who never would have seen the inside of a classroom if it wasn't for the debt relief that we've won over the last 25 years. In order to fulfill the Jubilee promise in our hearing today, it requires that we work on the structural policies that impact poverty, inequality, and climate change. They sound wonky, these structural issues of debt, trade, tax, anti-corruption, and transparency. But every global policy we win impacts hundreds of millions of people and lifts people out of poverty. In the United States, we also work on these critical policies, for example, with student debt and payday lending. In order to stop predatory lending in the United States to protect poor people, our religious coalition works on legislation with Republicans and Democrats. We work on student debt relief so that students across the country can benefit and during the pandemic, we won a moratorium on all student debt payments. This work has been critical with both Republicans and Democrats at the United Nations with the International Monetary Fund. We continue our efforts at Jubilee USA, a coalition of Jews, Muslims, and Christians to live out the Jubilee promise, to make the Jubilee promise real in our hearing to impact the global policies of today so that we can live in a world where we're all free from having too much or too little. We can live in the promised world where we all have enough.